Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Hina Joshi. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you. At least eight killed in flash floods in India's West Bengal amid heavy monsoon rain. Sri Lanka holds race as crisis hit economy banks on government reforms, IMF bailout. And Nepal cricket star Sandeep Labichane arrested in Kathmandu over rape charges. And now for all the details. Flash floods hit a river in India's West Bengal state, killing at least eight people on Wednesday in the latest incident of heavy seasonal rain causing havoc in South Asia. Authorities on Thursday said that around 70 people were rescued while 13 were undergoing treatment at a regional hospital. At least eight people were killed after flash floods hit a river in India's eastern state of West Bengal on Wednesday in the latest incident of heavy seasonal rain causing havoc in South Asia. The incident happened as people were immersing an idol of Hindu goddess Durga in the Mal River in the state's Jalpaiguri district as part of religious festivities. Around 70 people were rescued by disaster relief teams while 13 were undergoing treatment at a regional hospital. West Bengal's Chief Minister Mamata Banerjee said on Twitter on Thursday. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi also took to Twitter to express condolences to the families of the victims as he announced a compensation package in addition to that of the state government. Around 8.30 p.m. suddenly there was a flash flood, maybe in the higher altitudes. And as a result, we had a flash flood. And within five minutes, some people were swept away. Of them, approximate 25 have been recovered on the spot itself and they had been sent to hospital. 13 were admitted, while around 10 were left after primary treatment. Sadly, some people died. The bodies of eight persons have been recovered last night itself. Eastern and northeastern parts of India received 128% more rainfall than normal on Wednesday with some places receiving as much as 3.5 inches of rain, according to the India Meteorological Department, which has forecast heavy rain in West Bengal and nearby states in the next three to four days. The ruling coalition of Pakistan has termed opposition PTI chairman Imran Khan a traitor and warned him against attacking Islamabad, referring to a long march rally announced by the former premier towards the capital city. Khan has been leading rallies since his ouster as Prime Minister in the month of April, demanding a snap election. The ruling coalition of Pakistan has called opposition PTI party chairman and former Prime Minister Imran Khan a traitor and warned him against attacking the capital Islamabad, urging the PTI-led governments of Punjab and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa to abstain from becoming a tool in paving the way for chaos in the country. During a coalition meet at the Prime Minister's office chaired by Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif to discuss the political and economic situation, the attendees agreed that Imran Khan would not be permitted to attack Islamabad by going outside the boundaries of the constitution and the law in response to his call for a long march towards the city. Earlier this week, Khan requested his party's leaders and members to take an oath that they would join in the long march in Islamabad. He urged his supporters to be ready for the second large-scale demonstration by next week to demand that the National Assembly be dissolved and general elections be held at an early date. The former PM has been leading rallies since his dismissal demanding snap elections, which the ruling coalition has rejected, saying voting will be held as scheduled later next year. In an effort to put an end to Imran Khan's long march, Shahbaz Sharif's administration has also chosen to mobilize the army and station troops in the national capital. Moving on, 
Residents in Pakistan administered Kashmir have expressed dismay over rising gas prices and deforestation in the illegally occupied region. They have accused the Pakistani government of being apathetic towards their plight by failing to regulate the prices. Locals in Pakistan administered Kashmir have raised their concern over high price of LPG, liquefied petroleum gas, due to which people are resorting to cutting trees for their basic needs. They said they are already facing immense difficulties due to the consistent rise in inflation and now frequent gas price hikes along with food and transportation costs has severely hit the domestic budgets of the people in the illegally occupied region. They added indiscriminate filling of trees for cooking, heating and other needs has led to environmental degradation. They have accused the Pakistan government of being apathetic towards their plight by failing to regulate prices and requested them to control inflation. जिसकी वजह से लोगों का जीना दोबार हो गया है, तो गैस भी चूते लोगों की जरूरियात है जिंदगी में और बहुत ज्यादा ही यानी इसकी इस वक्त जरूरत है पाकिस्तान के अंदर जिस तरह के आप देख ही रहे हैं कि आज जो क्लाइमेट चेंज भी हो रहा है उस वजह से बजाय इसके कि लोगों को सस्ती गैस फराम की जाए तो सस्ती गैस फराम करने के बजाय अगर लोगों को अगर इन मुश्किल हालात में डाल दिया जाए कि वो फिर जंगल की कटाई करें तो पहले ही इतने मुश्किलात बनी हुई हैं पाकिस्तान इन रीसेंट मंथ्स हैज बीन विटनेसिंग इकोनॉमिक चैलेंजेस ओइंग टू इट्स इनकॉम्पिटेंट पॉलिसीज हाउएवर दिस ऑक्युपाइड रीजन व्हिच इज ऑलरेडी मार्जिनलाइज्ड हैज बोर्न द मेजर ब्रंट ऑफ अनफेयर टैक्सेस एंड हाई इन्फ्लेशन इन न्यूज़ फ्रॉम श्रीलंका as sri lanka grapples with red hot inflation and shortage of dollars to pay for imports a central bank held policy rates a study on thursday saying that monetary conditions remain sufficiently tight the central bank is predicting an 8.7% gdp contraction for the year 2022 Sri Lanka's central bank held policy rate steady on Thursday saying that monetary conditions remain sufficiently tight after a massive rate hike campaign earlier in the year as the crisis hit nation grapples with red hot inflation and shortage of dollars. The standing lending facility rate was held steady at 15.5% while the standing deposit facility rate was kept unchanged at 14.5% as widely expected. The South Asian island of 22 million people is battling its worst economic crisis since independence from Britain in 1948 with an acute dollar shortage to pay for essential imports of food, fuel and medicine. The inflation remains uncomfortably high, hitting a record of 69.8% in September year on year with food inflation up 93.7%, exacerbated by rupee currency's dip and global surge in commodity prices. The central bank is predicting an 8.7% GDP contraction for 2022. Earlier this year Sri Lanka defaulted on its foreign debt for the first time in history. President Ranil Wickremesinghe on Thursday told the parliament that Sri Lanka hopes to reach a common agreement with creditor nations including Japan, China and India. Sri Lanka has to renegotiate around 30 billion US dollars of foreign debt before the International Monetary Fund finalizes a loan program of about 2.9 billion US dollars. In news from Nepal, fugitive cricket star Sandeep Lamichhane returned to Nepal on Thursday to face rape charges nearly a month after an arrest warrant was issued against him. Lamichhane, who denies the charges, was immediately taken into custody at the international airport in Kathmandu. Sandeep Lami Chane the suspended captain of Nepal cricket team who is accused of raping a minor was taken into police custody upon his arrival at the Tribhuvan International Airport in capital Kathmandu on Thursday the 25 year old cricketer had earlier in a social media post claimed his innocence and termed the allegations as baseless on wednesday in a facebook post he said that he will fully cooperate in all stages of investigation and will fight a legal battle to prove his innocence 
The Nepal police had initiated a probe into the matter last month after a complaint was lodged against Lami Chane by a 17-year-old minor girl. An arrest warrant was also issued on September 8th in his absence while he was playing in the Caribbean Premier League in Jamaica. The cricket star will now have to remain in custody till Sunday as the courts are closed amid the festive season. Lami Chane is a leg spinner and was appointed as Nepal cricket team captain in 2021. He formally captained the under-19 Nepal cricket team in 2016 during the Asia Cup. He rose to fame when he became the first from his country to play in the Inter-Premier League back in 2018 when he featured for Delhi Capitals. Bangladeshi entrepreneurs have anchored their hopes on the jute industry amid a major shift in consumer demand for eco-friendly products that is driving the demand for jute-based products globally. Versatile applications of jute products ranging from ordinary packing materials to geotextiles, apparels, upholstery and many more have ushered in a new era for Bangladesh entrepreneurs. They are optimistic that the coming years hold great potential for the country's jute sector. Both officials and entrepreneurs have anchored their hopes on the jute industry as the world realizes the value of this natural fiber amid climate change. With the advent of synthetic fibers, jute fiber was going extinct. But awareness among the people to live eco-friendly has paved the way to resuscitate the industry. So, আমার ইচ্ছা ভবিষ্যতে আমি একটা ফ্যাক্টরি দিব সেই ফ্যাক্টরিতে আমার কিছু কর্মচারী নিয়োজিত থাকবে আমি কাজ করব সেটা ফলো আপ করব এবং দেশে এটা বাজারজাতকরণ হবে প্রথম পর্যায়ে এবং ধীরে ধীরে এটা আমার এক্সপোর্ট করারও ইচ্ছে আছে আমি যখন দেখলাম যে আমাদের আমরা মেয়েরা ঘরে বসে কিছু করতে চাই সেই ক্ষেত্রে পাটকে আমরা অনেক ব্যবহার করতে পারি এই ডাইভার্সিফাইড প্রোডাক্টটাকে যদি আমরা প্রমোট করি আমাদের নিজেদের ওয়েতে ট্র্যাডিশনাল ওয়েতে যা আমাদের যা নিজস্ব ডিজাইন আছে আমরা কম বেশি এখন সবাই দক্ষ আবার বাইরের দেশগুলো এখন দেখতেছি যে পাটের প্রতি অনেক ইন্টারেস্টেড নোন অ্যাজ দ্য গোল্ডেন ফাইবার জুট ইজ ওয়ান অফ দ্য মেজর ক্যাশ ক্রপস ইন বাংলাদেশ জুট ইজ আ ন্যাচারাল ফাইবার অ্যান্ড জুট প্লান্টস মোস্টলি গ্রো ইন দ্য গ্যাঞ্জাস ডেল্টা রিজন Bangladesh is the world's second largest jute producer with an estimated annual output of 1.6 million tons in 2019 according to UN data. As part of its continued efforts to revive the golden era of jute, the Bangladeshi government also observed National Jute Day on March 6th. An Indian factory is recycling cigarette stubs into stuffing for soft toys and pillows and serving dual purposes of conserving the environment and providing livelihood to an all-women team of workers. Have a look. With nearly 267 million smokers in India, according to World Health Organization estimates, cigarette butts are frequently seen mixed in with garbage on the streets of New Delhi. For businessman Naman Gupta, the trash is his treasure and he's established a company called Code Effort that collects more than a thousand kilograms of cigarette stubs from the streets each day, recycling it to create stuffing for plush toys and pillows among other things. Sitting on the ground near the factory in Noida city, women smile and chat as they carefully separate the paper, tobacco and filters from the stubs before the three materials are processed. Whatever materials that we collect, we process and recycle all the cigarette waste here at our factory. First, it goes through a separation process, wherein after separation, we get three items, paper, tobacco and the filters. So from the paper, uh, we make recycled paper products. From tobacco, we make compost powder and from the filters, we make beautiful products such as soft toys, cushions and many more. ये सिरकट है जो पी के लोग फेंक देते हैं तो उठा के हम इनको साफ कर रहे हैं ठीक है और ये गंदगी भी साफ हो जाती है और हमारे बच्चे भी पल जाए दो पैसे मिल रहे हैं हमको गुप्ता से टिल 31st मार्च 2022 दे हैड ऑलरेडी रिसाइकल्ड मोर देन 1.2 बिलियन सिगरेट बर्ड्स वी हैव जस्ट डन 1% ऑफ द टोटल मार्केट so in the coming time period, we are expecting to recycle more than 300 tons per month, he said. Cigarette butts are the most discarded waste item worldwide according to the UN Environment Programme. 
Most of these end up in oceans and beaches with disastrous consequences for marine environments. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.